use one can of water for each size can of beans used. Pour beans and water into a pot that accommodates the amount you're making. Cover, boil, then lower temperature to a slow simmer. Stir occasionally to avoid burning. Go on to prep vegetables for your sofrito mixture. Peel and chop garlic and onions. I use a garlic press. Mom used a pilong. Quantity varies with how much rice and beans you're making. Heat skillet before adding oil. Mom used tocino, which is pork belly or bacon fat in the early days. A tablespoon or so of bacon fat gives this a unique taste. Pour oil, add bacon fat if you desire now or later and prepare to mix the prepped ingredients. Start adding and stirring garlic, onions, packets of sasson, salt, pepper, oregano to skillet. Keep it at low heat. Remember beans, check, stir, lower heat. Finish adding and stirring in seasoning. Taste test it for flavor and continue stirring to avoid burning. After tasting, I will adjust the flavor by adding more seasoning, if needed, to my taste. More onion or garlic powder, salt, etc. The amount of tomato paste will vary from tablespoons to a half a can or more. You will be splitting the sofrito in half, some into the beans and the other to the rice that contains meat. To kick it up a notch, I will add my homemade recaito or goyas to enrich flavor if needed. Simmer and stir. Turn off the heat, divide the mixture in the pan. Use half in the beans and the other half will be used to cook the rice with meat. Add sofrito to beans. Bring to a slow simmer, check and stir often. Do not let beans burn. Bean sauce will thicken as it cooks. I'm adding more oregano. Again, taste and adjust flavor to your taste buds. Taste. If satisfied, cover and simmer. On this day, I used Vienna sausage, as mom would do on occasions. Our favorite was rice and chicken. The cooking directions are basically the same. Cooking time will vary when using raw meats. Drain juice and set aside. Cut meat, add to sofrito, stir to coat, and let simmer to absorb flavors. Then add juice and some water to almost cover the top of meat. If you were using chicken, this is where you would start cooking it, allowing the flavors to absorb into the meat. Cover, cook on simmer, allowing chicken to cook through. Cooking time will vary with the amount of meat used. Add Goya achote paste here for a deeper color rice if desired. Once done, pour into pot that will be used to cook the rice and meat. Determine the amount of rice to cook. Remove any black specks 
Wash rice in cold water until new water begins to clear. Quickly drain water from rice and prepare to pour into a hot oil skillet. I used bacon fat and canola oil to coat the bottom of hot pan. Stir rice around to coat kernels. This seems to help in preventing mushy rice. Olive oil or any oil can be used. You're only coating the rice, not cooking it. So if you need to add more oil, do so. Now pour rice into the pot that was set aside with meat and sofrito mixture. Stir rice into meat and sofrito pot. Add water to cover rice by one inch. Too much water will cause mushy rice. Mom would stand a spoon in the pot. If the spoon fell over, remove some water. Once it would stand, remove spoon, cover pot, and bring to a slow to medium boil. Check beans. Stir, cover, and turn off if done. If bean sauce seems too watery, use spoon to mash some beans against the inside wall of the pot or add a diced potato and continue to cook on low. Stir and cover. Do not burn beans. Move on to check rice for next steps. Check and taste for hardness. If water has been absorbed and rice is very hard, add more water. Not to cover, but to give it more moisture to cook. Chicken broth or salted water can be used in place of plain water. Cover with wax paper or foil to help steam rice. Cook on low. Do not stir rice or uncover rice again. Let it cook for at least 15 minutes before checking. If rice sticks to bottom, do not mix. The crispy bottom is called big ao. Finally, check for doneness of rice. If satisfied, turn off and prepare to serve your rice and beans. At the end, I have included the words from the video and items that may be of help. This video was made to help keep Julia Soto's recipe alive for generations to come. Love you, Mom.